film is Metzia Kuv Tes, but Metzia one hundred and nine. Tav Yomi is dedicated for Shmira, for the Chayalim Matzah, for the Shuyim Yeshua, for Am Yisrael in this difficult time. It says Tav Yomi uh, on the top of Kuf Tes Amid Aleph Hamikabel Sada Mechavero Lishanim Muatos. If a person rents a field from his friend for a certain number of years, for for a short amount of time, Rash he says it comes clear from the Mishnah. For less than seven years, will Israel and a pishton? He's not. He shouldn't plant. He's not allowed to plant their pishton. This cotton. The reason is because the cotton ruins the land. Then it'll take seven years to get back to its original state. The Elo Bekoros Shikma. He doesn't have. If there are sycamore trees, he's not allowed to cut them down and use them for wood because it takes seven years to grow them back. If it's if it's less than seven years as the rental, then he's going to return it in a Diminished state. Kibwai metal is I and Shana, but let's say he rented the property for seven years, then Shana Rishona Yisrael Pishtan, and the first year he could plant the cotton, and then it'll get it by the time seven years are up, he'll be returning it to the owner, and also Yeshua the Koro Shikma, and also will have the ability to to uh, grow uh, to cut down the sycamore wood. So now we're up to the Kamara Abaye says he doesn't have the right to the chorus shikma. Amar Abaye the chorus shikma engo the shevach shikma yeshlo. He doesn't have he doesn't have the right if it's less than seven years. He doesn't have the right to the wood from the sycamore tree, but he does have the right to the growth of the sycamore tree. Like just like if the tree produce if the field produces fruits, he has those rights and he can sell them back to the owner. So too if it produces the growth of the sycamore tree, he has a, he's entitled to that. The Rava says, I feel the Shavach Shikma Nami Elo. Rava says, we're on 109A, 109A at the top. Rava says, I feel the Shavach Shikma Nami Elo. Rava says, even to the growth from the sycamore tree, he's also not entitled to. So the Gemara is going to challenge Rava. Meisve, it says, I'm a Kabbal Sadech Mechavero, the Giyaz Mano Atzeis, Shamaro. The Braisa says that if you rent a field, and it comes time to leave the field. You evaluate. Now, what are you evaluating for? My lab, Shamamo B'Shevach Shekma. Are we evaluating the growth of the sycamore? And Gemara says, no. Shamamo Yeraka V'Silka. Gemara says, no, we're evaluating the um, vegetables and the beets that are there. And Gemara says, Yarko V'Silka. It can't be that we're evaluating the vegetables and the beets. Yarko V'Silka, Nako V'Nishko. Now we could just uproot and, and and take with him. That's not something that's remaining on the land. So the Gemara explains, No, you can't take it because it's not market day yet. So therefore there's value there. And you evaluate it that the owner of the land has to pay the tenant for that. Next case, Let's say you rent a field from your friend and it becomes the sabbatical year. Again, we're trying to prove disprove for Rafa. Rav says, yeah, um, you don't you don't give him the growth of the sycamore tree. So the, the Bryce says that if you rent out a field from your friend, it becomes a sabbatical year. Then what you do is you evaluate him. So Gemara first interrupts and says, What are you talking about? The sabbatical year doesn't kick you off the land. It just means you're not allowed to work the land, but it doesn't kick you off. So read the text as follows. So read the read the read the Bryce says, follows. If the, you rent out a field and the jubilee year arrives, then if you rent out a, a, a field from your friend and the jubilee year arrives, shaman will we evaluate it. Kati, the Gemara says, still, does the jubilee year really kick you out? Does the, does the jubilee year really kick out? Does it kick out a rental? It's meets to some Rahman. When does the jubilee year kick you out? If you if you had sold the property and you bought it, so therefore you think you own it in perpetuity, that's where the jubilee year kicks you out. But if it's a rental, the Torah doesn't say it kicks you out. So therefore, men the text, somebody who purchases a field from his friend, and then the jubilee year arrives, we evaluate, we evaluate the... Uh, 
We evaluate the we evaluate the property. So somebody purchases a field from his friend, and the jubilee year arrives, then shaman will. Then we, then we, uh, then we uh, evaluate it before we kick him out. And if you want to say here also, we're just evaluating the, the vegetables and the beets. Silka It can't be that that's what we're evaluating because that's onerous in the jubilee year. So it must be, oh, what are we evaluating? Shevach shikma. It means that we evaluate the shevach of the shikma, the growth of the sycamore tree. And so therefore, we're saying that in this context, that the growth of the sycamore tree is evaluated. And that's a question on Rava. So the Tirgama Abai, Aliba de Rava Abai, protects Rava. He says, Shani Hasa, in that case, is different to Amar Kra, because the Pasuk says, Viyatsa Mimkar Bayis. So the 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 mimkar of the household will go out. The yatsa mimkar bias. So the the whatever is sold from the household will return. Mimkar choser, meaning to say that whatever is sold returns back to the original owner. But shevach, but the growth of the sycamore tree, the growth of the of the of the of the, of the trees, ain't no choser. That doesn't go back. That the the original owner has to reimburse the person who bought it. Mar says, well, Venigmar Mine, well, why don't we learn from here? Why don't we learn from here the Awacha? Meaning to say as follows that uh so look at the uh look at the Rashi. So oh, there's no Rashi in it. But anyway, why don't we learn the law of somebody who rents out a field for a specific time from the person who sells his field? That just like the shikma goes back to him, the growth goes back to him in the uh, that just like the growth does not go back to the person who, who sold it for the jubilee year, so to an intent, it doesn't go back. Why don't we just learn the same principle from this? So the Gnar says, no, there's a fundamental difference between the jubilee year and the tenant. Hasim Zabini Ma'al Yahud, that in the case of the jubilee year, it's a total sale. And so therefore, it's really uh, growing in his domain. But in this case, Viovo, I've got the Demalkahu. So, and the Jubilee year is just uprooting it because it's the, 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 like a decree of the king. But in the case of the sycamore tree, it's not, and the guy, it's a totally different thing. In the case of the tenant, it's a totally different thing. We don't say he has the same authority. Look at Rashi. Hasim Zibina Ma'ayu, the Kolkama, the Ishbasa Ara, as long as the Ishbasa Ara, as long as the land has improved, Bereshuse Ashbacha, improves in the, the authority of the it improves under the authority of the new owner of Ara the Hajra Misham the Yovo and now the the baseland that returns that's just because it's the decree of the king. By the Wapaka Malka or Mafka, whatever king does and rule goes back, goes back. So we made a ruling that the sale goes back but not the Shevach. But in the case of the tenant, it didn't we, we can't apply that. So we can't learn from the case of the Jubilee to the case of the tenant. Our papi, so now we have some cases. Our papi, kibo ara. Our papa, our papi, our papa received, rented some land as pasta. So our papa rented out some land for its, um, basically, uh, uh, in order to grow this fodder for the vet, for the animals. Kadahu batawe. And so in, and while he was renting out the land, some trees grew there. Become a when he was leaving. Amaru, he said to the uh, landlord, Havali Shifcha, give me the value of the trees that are now there. Amaru, Rav Sheisha, Breda, Vidu, Rav Papa, what's the case? You want to say you get the value of the trees. Let's say there's a palm tree and the palm tree grew a little thicker. You think you're also entitled to the value of the improvement? And you are, so Rav Papa says, Amaru, you know, in the case of the palm trees, it's totally different. I didn't go in in order to make the tree bigger, but just to eat the fruit. But here, uh, uh, here I took, Rashi says, but here I went in for everything that I'll grow there, I should have the rights to it. Come on, this must be like a bayi. Isn't this, is Rav Papa passing like a bayi who says that he's entitled to the growth of the sycamore? And Mar says, no. I feel a tame of You could even say that Abaye is ruling like Rava. Awesome way sleep seda, In that case over there, 
the uh, in the case of the uh, sycamore tree, it's not necessarily the case that the owner is losing anything because he couldn't have planted anything in that spot. But here he is able to plant something, meaning to say that that that's a fundamental difference. That it's, the, the Rav Papa is not necessarily ruling like a buyer because in the case of the sycamore trees, he couldn't have necessarily planted something else there. Amrway, my So 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 indeed, he said to him. He said to him, Rav Shishi said to Rav Papa, "What's your?" Um, how come you're losing money? So he says, Yada da aspasta. He said, I lost the, the place where there was the aspasta. I could have planted everything there. So he said, Well, if that's the case, should call Yada da aspasta. Vizil, take the value of the aspasta and, and go. Meaning to say, you don't have the right to the to the whole tree. You only have the right to the aspasta. Amrulai, he says, No. On a Korkama Rishka, Rabbi, I could have planted there the uh, saffron, a very expensive uh, growth. I see that. What were you doing here? You were planting it just to take it up like a like an annual to plant it up and to quickly take it. So if that's the case, shakal korkam arishka vizio enochalat me yitzim alvad. All you have is the value of the trees. Meaning to say, once you show that you were planning to rip it up and go, you, you, clearly you're not planting these trees for the long term. You're just planting them for their lumber, and that's all you get. Rabbi Rabbi, another case. Rabbi Rabbi Akibo Ara, the way Mishunesa. So Rabbi Rabbi he rented out land, and then what happened was there was uh, like a type of rock that came up and was surrounding the ground so he had rented. And on this rock grew some trees, some whatever types of trees they were. He, the Zerah trees. When he was leaving, Amroi Havuli Shivchai says, Give me my money for the growth of these trees. So it says, Rav Papi, Mishum Da'asim in Mulai. You came from the Mulai, from the people who lived a short in life. These are from the children of Eli, the descendants of Eli, who was cursed in Shmuel uh, that he was that he he was cursed. Uh, so for this reason, Mishum Amru Mule Miliyasa. You said words that were you didn't really fully understand them. You said shortened version. I feel Rav Papa even wrote. Even Rav Papa, who said that he was entitled to the growth, so Amr al the Islay Pseda, he only said that because he lost the place he could have otherwise planted on. But Hacha, my Pseda Islay, what loss will you have here? There was a rock there. You couldn't have planted, so you're not entitled to anything. Says the Gemara, Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef had a specific planter. So Shachiv, but the planter died. The guy died. So Veshava Chamisha Chatan Vasa, he left behind five sons in law. Amar Ada in Nachad. So Rav Papa, Rav Yosef said to himself, up until now I was dealing with one guy. Hashda Chamisha, now I have five. I didn't know who Avi Samko Adadi. One guy, he wasn't relying upon anybody else. Who am I to do it? And so therefore, I wasn't losing any money. Has, but Hashda Chamisha Samko Adadi, who moved suddenly. Then, but now there's five people. They rely upon each other, and nobody's going to actually do it. Suddenly, if you have two, the Gemara also says, if you have two people stirring a pot. Two partners, it's not going to be hot. It's not going to be cold. They're going to mess it up. Meaning to say, he never gets hot, never gets cold. He never gets what you want because everyone's thinking the other one's going to do it. You have to have one guy in charge. So I'm going to go, Isha, please, so Chef Chai. So therefore, he says, Rav Yosef said to them, Isha, please, Chef Chai, Mr. Leiko Mutav. If you want to take your, father, your father-in-law's uh, growth that he did to the plants, take it and leave. The glow, but otherwise, I'll kick you out. If you don't leave, I'm going to kick you out without giving you the value of the growth that he made. As we have a statement in the name of uh, either Rav Yehuda or Rav Huna or Rav Nachman, this planter who died, the errors. You could kick off his heirs even without giving them the, the money of the value that he increased, like the growth of the sycamores. But Rav Nilsi, that's a made up statement. They never said that, but Rav Yosef was just trying to get them off the land, which he was entitled to. There was a plan to the He says, If I cost you money, uh, you can get rid of me. He, that's what he said. He said, if I if I ruin your field, you can get rid of me. So that's what he said. So um, he said. 
so indeed, that's what happened. The offset, he cost them money. He 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 ruined the field. So I'm Rav Yehuda, mistalik below Shavachah. Kick him off and don't even let him t- get the growth that he inc- that he increased. Rav Kana, I'm mistalik for Shachal Shavachah. Rav Kana said no. He he kick him off, but he's entitled to the improvement in the growth. Moda Rav Kana, Rav Kana would admit the Amar he pasin them mistalik no below Shavachah. That if he had said if I mess up, you can kick me off without giving me the improvement. That he would admit it. Mistalik below Shavachah. You could kick him off without the improvement. Rava says, Asmachta. Rava says, no, we wouldn't even agree with it there because that's an exaggerated statement. And Asmachta will kind of, you had a question, Bill? Well, according to the opinion who says Asmachta is not binding, then it's always not binding. But the question is, what's in Asmachta? It's an exaggerated statement, which you don't think he really meant when he said it. You don't think he understood the ramifications of what he was saying. Or Rav No, there's a value to the term saying this type of statement is called an asmachta and it's not binding. I mean, this person said a statement like this, an exaggerated statement, he didn't realize the implications, so therefore it's not binding. It's a it's a clause in a contract which is which he couldn't have expected to be to really have understood. So the Mara says, Or Rava, Maishna, according to Rava. Who says that it's a smachta and it's not binding? Why is it different? Why is it different from the following Mishnah, which states, which we just had recently, uh, five days ago, in Ovir below Avid, that if I leave this land fallow and I don't work it, I shall have a mitzvah, I'll have to pay you back from the best value that it could have produced. So, why does Rav, why would Rav explain the Mishnah? I think Mark explains, no, awesome, my day, ifs and Michelle, I'm there. He's going to pay exactly the the he caused them a loss. He caused them a loss by saying he was not going to leave a foul and he left a fallow. Ha ha my de ifsit away. But here what he caused them a loss, we would deduct. The idach yavinaway, the loss we could deduct, but the rest we would give it to him. Now we have another case. Runya, the person named Runya Shatawa the Ravina. He worked for Ravina, he was the planter. Avsit Salke. So he caused them a loss, and so Ravina kicked him off. So Asla came to Rava. So he came to Rava. He said, Chazimar, I'm like, Chazimar, Michael Avila, do you, can't you see what Rava did to me? He kicked me off. I'm like, Shabir Ravin. He said he did the right thing. I'm like, Hello, Asrabi. He said he never, but, so Runya said he never warned me first. I'm like, Well, Tuchola Asros. He says he doesn't need to warn you before firing you. Rava Tame, Dama Rava, Rava said, Makre the Dardaki, if you're a teacher of, of, of little children, or Shatala, or your planter, Tabacha, or your butcher, Vumana. Umana here, Rashi says, is a mole, but elsewhere, Umana in Shas is a Rashi, not a Rashi, elsewhere says it's a mole, but elsewhere he says it's a blood letter, it's like a type of doctor. And Visafar Masa, the scribe of the city, uh, all of these places are cool and Kamusra and Va'umdin Dami. They're all like they are, all these professions are like they're warned. And and ready to be fired if they mess up. Call the milsa kol pseid the lo adar kamuster and vomdim dummy. The general rule is anything that's a um, a loss that's irreversible is like they're already warned. So a couple of things. So why is the teacher considered to be uh, somebody who could be fired without warning? Because Rashi says because if a teacher teaches a child something wrong, the child can never forget it. It's something that will be ingrained in him, and so therefore won't be able to undo it. Tosus gives a different answer because the teacher is wasting the child's time. And so therefore we see from here, a teacher has to be very uh, uh, scrupulous not to waste the time of his students. What's the idea of a Safar Masa? So here too, Rashi says that this is somebody who is um, writing um, uh, Torah scrolls for the people of this city. But the Tosas and Rabbeinu Yonas and the Miri say that it's somebody who writes contracts for the city. Tosas challenges Rashi. Tosas says, um, I don't understand. Um, Tosas, Tosas challenges Rashi's explanation because if you're writing a Torah scroll, you can fix it. And that's not called the loss that can't return. So, so someone will say, that maybe it's talking about certain, they give the explanation, maybe it's talking about the shame Hashem, which you can't erase, but you could peel that off. Or maybe it's talking about a, a Torah scroll with five mistakes in one column, which you can't fix. 
They don't say, well, maybe it's a tourist, a, a sofa is writing mezuzahs or tefillin, which you can't fix those mistakes either. Okay, hahu shatoa to Amaru, there was a planter who said, that we have another case, he said to them, habu shivchai to ba'ino mesak He says, give me my my improvements that I made in the land, because I want to make Aliyah, I want to go to Israel, and I'm entitled to, therefore, end the partnership. Generally speaking, you wouldn't be entitled to end the partnership early, but in this case, you want to go to Israel, which is a mitzvah. Also, came to Rav Papa Bar Shmuel, came to Rav Papa Bar Shmuel, and he said to him, So, so what happened was, the, uh, the, the person who was the planter took them, the, 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 the uh, planter, he says, the, give me my improvements. So, Amalei Rava, Rava says, Iu ashka ashbach aro ashbach, meaning to say, what, why is he getting all the improvements? You think that the land had nothing to do with it? The land also had something to do with it. So therefore he was saying, Rava was saying, do you think only he improved the land? Also the land improved by itself. I mean, I'm not going to give you all the improvements. So Rav Papa said, Amalei, Ana Palga de Shafla Kamino. Okay, give me half the improvements. Give me half the improvements. The Amr way, Rav Papa said to the uh, to the planter, but still, this is also insufficient. Why? Okay, up until today, you're you were getting half. The owner was getting half, and the planter was getting half. But now, if he gives you half, he's going to end. The, the owner is going to end up with less than half. But now he's going to have to pay. A, another person to fill in your work. So Amarle Rivo de Shikha Kamina. He says, No, I, I need a quarter. So give me a quarter of my improvements. So what what does this mean? So Sabravash Umar Riva do Danka. It's a quarter which is a six. So the way to understand and this is let's say you have improvements. Let's say we're talking about something where you improve the vineyard by six uh dollars. So now so What's a quarter that's a sixth? Basically, he's saying that the owner of the land is going to get half. So that's three. Now there's the other half that's remaining. That's three. But we're going to say that we give the original planter one, and we're going to give the other person two, because that's going to come out of his... uh, uh, is going to come out of the remaining part. Why? In a place where the there's two types of people. One is a uh, a shatola. He's a planter. He typically would get half. He would do more work. Whereas the arisa, whereas just the guy who's like the hired laborer in this case, he gets a third of the improvements. So hi shatola to buy the If you want to get rid of the planter. You give him his improvement. So you give him his improvement, but you don't cause a loss. So therefore, you have to give one third to the new person coming in. That's the, the Aris. He's going to get one third. So that's two out of six. And so then the original owner got three out of six. So now there's left one six for the original share, uh, Shatah, the original planter. So that's what he says, a quarter, which is really a six. So if you say quarter, that's a six, that makes sense. Only Amrit's river mamish, but if you're going to say he's actually going to get an actual quarter, 1.5 out of six, then you're going to be costing the original owner a half the owner of the land a half of a six. So that's no good. So therefore you only have to give him a quarter of a six, a quarter, which is a six. So I'm only Rav Acha, but Rav Yosef, Rav Ashi, the lame away. But why the the planter could say to the owner of the vineyard, because since you're getting half of the improvements, take it, and now take another uh, quarter to give to the share cropper, meaning to say uh, you take half, now you take another quarter to give to the share cropper, which is uh, one at one point five, and I'll take the remaining quarter. Uh, which is is left. The ant menasa diloch avelarisa, and from your portion, meaning to say, you're going to take 
three plus 1.5. So now you're going to give him, so you have a total of 4.5. So you're going to give him, uh, you're going to give him a third of what you got, which is one quarter of the vineyard. And so therefore, it'll all work out well for you. And I can do with my portion whatever I want. So uh, she says, it's a really good question. Actually, Come back and ask me that when we get to uh, Tractate Tzvachim. So there's two, some understand this, that he was just pushing him off till then, stalling for time. Some say that he really was a good question. Okay, Gufa. So now we analyze this. Amarav. In a case where the planter gets half, and uh, the Arise, the person who shows up just to harvest it, he gets a third. This planter you want to get rid of, you give him his shevach, his growth, and you get rid of him. So the owner doesn't lose. Let's say you have an, an old grapevine and it's not going to produce any more fruit, and the owner of the vineyard wants to uproot it and to take the, the wood, Palga, uh, he takes half of the wood as his payment, because they're like the other fruit. So that he's going to get half of the wood. But Shatfanara, but let's say the uh, vineyard washed, uprooted the grapevine and washed it away, and so, therefore, you can't plant fruits for a long time. And you need to get rid of the grapevine. Then river. Then he takes a quarter of the wood because we're going to say he needs to get rid of his job. And so, therefore, he's like somebody who's uh, taking up early. And there we say that he only gets a quarter of the sheva. So, Ahu uh, Gavra. Okay, so now there was a man, Damashkin Pardes El He took his, his vineyards and he... Mortgage them to his friend. That's well, Hashanah. He says, you're going to have it for 10 years. And this we learned earlier is like what's called a mashkanta de sura, that each year you deduct from the mortgage. Vikash l'chamei shanam. And after five years, it dried up. Abai says, peri that the branches of this fruit, of the vineyard, are considered like the fruit. And, the, and therefore, the lender is able to take them. Meaning to say, he could take the uh, he could take the branches. Rava says Karnavi. Rava says this the, the dead the dead grapevine is considered like the principal Vilakakbo uh, Karka. excuse me, it's considered to be like real like the principal, and therefore the lender is not able to take them. Because if he does that, he's going to be destroying the principal. So therefore, what they should do, says Rabbi he should take the dead, the dead tree, buy uh, other land, and then and then consume the fruits of that. That's what the lender should do. So the Gemara challenges Abayi's approach, who says that this thing is fruits, and the lender is allowed to take it. That's something we just learned in uh, in the Bray. So if a person's tree dried up or it was cut down, Shneim Asurimbo. Then we learn in the uh, in the bride so that if the tree dries up or it's cut down, both can't touch it. Kate said, Yeah, so what should they do? You machru, but eat some vilaka and karka, vuoko pera. So you sell it uh, to buy land, which becomes a new principle, and then the lender will eat fruits with it. My love, you have a stumio de nix. So aren't we saying that's the case where the dried up tree is like the cut down tree? My nix, that's bismano. Have you have a just like if you cut it down? Uh, because it doesn't make fruit, so uh, so too if it's dried up, we're going to say bismano, and so vekotani shilak ben karkavu ocho peros al makarnavi. Don't we see from here that the that the dead tree is considered like the principal? You have to sell it. The Gemara says, "Oh, nitza dumya di yavesh, ma yavesh for bismano, av nitza et for bismano." Now we're talking about a case where he cut down the tree early, and uh, and so that case for sure he can use it because he he had gotten the. He, that's the basis for him getting the, the land. How did he cut it down early? Now, how to cut it down a, a tree early? And in this case, he did. In this case, he did. So the Gemara is going to challenge Abayi from another case, but we're going to stop here. God willing, pick this up. Pick this up in... Um,
tonight when we do the death again. Any questions? Happy to address.